recommend parameters for watts. So starting with duration. So duration is a measure of interstate sensitivity of the bond. So by definition, this is defined as an approximate percentage change in bond price for a 1% change in yield. So we have taken an example of 1% here, but this quantum can be different. So we can have a smaller percentage change as well for our, our analysis. But for now, let's stick to 1%. Now, it's a very, very effective and a frequently used metric by market participants, both by banks and financial institutions, mainly for measuring the overall risk of their bond portfolio, also at the same time for their limit monitoring purposes. Because we know that banks have a very robust limit structure and limits is a way of translating the risk appetite or risk tolerance of a bank into a quantitative term which can be used for actual benchmark or comparison purposes. So even for limits monitoring, duration happens to be one of the useful metrics which banks use. Now, a few types of durations. We start with Macaulay duration. So to understand Macaulay duration, there are two viewpoints to see this. So one is, this is, this is called as the weighted average maturity of the bond. And how do you define this weight? The weight is defined as the present value of cash flow as the proportion of the bonds price. So we are going to see this through a simple example as well. But this is one of the ways of defining Macaulay duration. The other way to look at Macaulay duration is to understand how long on average will the investor of the bond have to wait in order to recover all of their investment or recover all of the cash payments which are due from the bond. So these are two ways in which we can view Macaulay duration. Now, simple way to calculate Macaulay duration is given by this formula. So we have B as the bond price. CI are the cash flows on the bonds, which will be nothing but the periodic interest and the principal payment, which happens at maturity. TI are the individual time points. And Y is the continuously compounded yield. We have, we have to sum all of these individual cash flows together, which will help us arrive at Macaulay duration. So to understand how to apply this formula in practice, something which will be useful for the examination as well. Let's look at a very simple example. So we'll take a bond which has a face value of 100, maturity of three years, coupon of 10%, frequency is assumed to be semi-annual and YTM is assumed to be 11%. Now let's analyze the steps which are shown here. So we'll, we'll understand how do we get to 2.658. So focusing on the very first column, this is nothing but a simple mapping of time steps. So six months right up to three years with a gap of six months each because we have a semi-annual bond. The second column talks of the cash flows. Now we have a coupon of 10% and this is a semi-annual coupon paying bond. So we have a cash flow of five units each and a final cash flow of 100 plus 5 units, which is the face value plus the final cash flow. Discount factor is nothing but plain exponential discounting, E raised to minus RT. So that is what we apply here. So I simply take the time steps and I take this cash flow, which I have to discount. So discount factor is something which I, for which I use the yields and I use the time step. So R will be 11% and a time step of six months. So for example, 0 0.946, this will be derived as E raised to minus 11% into 0 0.5, something like this. So we applied successfully for each of these time steps to arrive at the respective discount factors. Now, these factors are going to be used for present valuing of all our cash flows. So simple time value of money calculations. This PV is simply a product. So this PV is a product of CF into the DF columns, which are shown here. So simply discounting these cash flows to present. And if I sum up all of these present values, I know that this is nothing but a bond price. So following the definition of a bond price, where we say that a bond price is nothing but the summation of present values of future cash flows. So that comes out to 96.74. Then we calculate the individual weights. So you can imagine weights are nothing but the contribution of each of these individual cash flows vis-a-vis -vis the total bond price. So these are simple ratios. So to calculate weights, I take present value of cash flow one, which is 4.732 
and I divided by 96. Then for the second cash flow, how do I get to 0 0.0463? I take 4.47 and we divide it by 96.74 again. So that way, these weights are nothing but a weighted average or maybe the individual weights of each of these individual cash flows vis-a-vis -vis the bond price. Naturally, everything has to sum to one because <clears throat> these ratios are with respect to the bond price. And the final column, which is time into weights, that is these are the time steps. So the first column and the weights which we have calculated. So a simple product will give us the time was time and weight products. And once we sum all of these together, we get this value of 2.658. And the unit for this is years. So the Macaulay duration for this bond is 2.658 years. Now we'll observe that for a coupon paying bond, Macaulay duration will be lower than the overall maturity. That is because we receive intermediate cash flows, which are our periodic coupon payments, which are paid out. That's why for a coupon paying bond, the Macaulay duration is lower than the time to maturity. Whereas for a zero coupon bond, we don't really have any intermediate cash flows. We just have one single shot payment which happens at maturity. So for a ZCB, the Macaulay duration will be exactly equal to maturity of the bond. Now, let's try to use this Macaulay duration in order to understand how we can estimate how much a bond price will get impacted because of a given change in yield. So we'll use the same Macaulay duration calculated earlier. So that was 2.6583. Uh, let's take the bond price is 95. So, so I've just taken some other bond price here just for demonstration purposes. And these are the two inputs. We'll assume the bond uh, or the yield change to be one basis point. So one BIPs is something which is very, very common, which we use for uh, interstate sensitivity analysis for bonds. So this basically gets related to a concept which we call as PV01 as well. This is the present value of a change of one basis point on how much is the impact on the bond. So PV01 also relates to this one basis point thing which we discuss here. So we take delta Y to be one BIPs which translate to point not, not, not one. Now to understand how much is the change in the bond price. Now we can use the duration metric which you have calculated. So that is nothing but a product of bond price, the bond duration and the bond and the change in yield, which is one basis. And of course, a negative sign will be required because duration and prices will be moving in opposite directions. Now the new bond price is coming out to be 94.97. So just the two steps are defined here as well. So the change in bond price, which we have shown via this formula here, is a simple product, which comes out to be minus 0 0.03. And the new bond price will be nothing but the original bond price and the change. We are combining these two. So we have 95 minus 0 0.03, which gives us 94.97. So that way we observe that if we have a bond duration given to us, and for a small change in yield, we can estimate how much would be an approximate change in the bond price. Why I say it's an approximate change in the bond price? Because we are not really pricing the bond altogether. We are simply taking the bond duration and we are using it in order to estimate what is the expected change in the bond price. So that's why this will be very, very close to the actual calculation if if we decide to use the bond pricing cal uh, steps once again, that is discounting of cash flows using the new yields. The value will be very, very close to this, but this can act like a shortcut of whenever we have to do a quick analysis as to uh, understanding what would be the impact of a very small change in yield on the bond price. Again, this is like a analysis which traders do very, very often because traders, whenever they are to take a certain trading decision or if they are simply analyzing their portfolio holdings, they may want to know how sensitive their portfolio is vis-a-vis -vis the underlying yields. So they may allow the underlying yields to change a bit for their scenario analysis and then see what's the impact on their portfolio. So that's how Macaulay duration can be used in practice as well. Similarly, Macaulay duration also gets used by risk managers. So risk managers will have a ready calculator which will calculate these durations and something which they will use maybe for limit monitoring or maybe even for internal MIS risk reporting as well. 
Next is modified duration. So modified duration is related to Macaulay duration. So if you recollect, Macaulay duration assumed a yield which was continuously compounded. Now, if we want to switch from continuous compounding into a discrete compounding format, that is, uh, let's say a semi-annual compounding, for example, then in that case, a modified duration measure could be used. So we use the Macaulay duration, which we calculated, uh, or it will be related to the earlier concept. So we'll see how that is done. So we have a formula for change in bond price, which will be given by this formula on the right hand side, where B is the original bond price, Y is the discreetly compounded yield, capital D is the bond duration, which we call as the Macaulay duration. M is the compounding frequency, so it could be semi-annual, quarterly, monthly, etc. And delta Y is the change in yield to measure the sensitivity, which I uh, mentioned earlier. Generally, we take it as one basis points. Now, we'll also talk about how much should be the quantum of this change in order to use the duration measure. So, in a latter part of this discussion, we'll understand why this uh, quantum change has to be small. So more about it later. So modified duration, which we represent by D star, is given by the Macaulay duration upon 1 plus Y by M. And the uh, duration relationship, in order to understand this sensitivity or change in bond price, will be given by the simple equation on the right hand side. So applying a simple example to understand modified duration, Let's say a bond is priced at 95. Its duration is two and a half years, which is the Macaulay duration. The yield is 12% and it's compounded semi-annually, so six monthly. Now, our aim is to calculate modified duration. So using the formula which we discussed on the previous slide, modified duration which we have represented by D star, that will be calculated as the Macaulay duration of two and a half upon one plus y by m so y is 12 percent and m is 2 because it's a semi-annually compounded so this gives us 2.35 now if we are to estimate what is the expected change in bond price we have or rather estimating this quantum something which will help us uh, arrive at what would be the new bond price so this is more of an intermediate step i would say so we have a minus 2.35 which is the modified duration into the change in yield which we took as one basis point into the current bond price of 95 which gives us this quantum and in order to know what is the new bond price again we are trying to estimate the new bond price we are not really pricing the bond altogether we use this change in bond price and related with 95 which is the original price so 95 minus this quantum which gives us to be 94.997 dollars so this is how i can use modified duration again as uh, as an estimator in order to calculate how much would be an estimated change in the bond price for a given change in yield. Now to measure the interstate sensitivity in dollar terms, there is another concept which we call as a dollar duration. So a dollar duration is nothing but a simple product of modified duration and bond price. So it's calculated this way, D star into the bond price. And the relationship to understand what would be the uh, expected change in the bond price delta b it will be the dollar duration into the given change in yield the third type is effective duration now effective duration is a popular metric whenever we have to handle bonds with embedded options so of course you can apply effective duration for plain vanilla bonds as well however whenever you have bonds which have embedded call or put features effective duration is something which uh, happens to be uh, a useful measure to be used for that analysis so uh, that more of a definition for the effective duration is given here now uh, why we talk about the expected changes in cash flows or possible fluctuations because whenever we have any kind of call or put features which are embedded that uh, that impacts the cash flow schedule for a bond so if I compare a plain vanilla bond versus a bond with embedded options, then there is a difference in the nature of cash flows. For a plain vanilla bond, I know for sure that I'll be receiving certain payments at specific time points. However, whenever I have a bond with embedded options, that may not be the case. Uh, whenever I have such options, they can result in variations in the uh, cash flows which I receive, depending on whether a certain option gets exercised whether an issuer call or maybe an investor put gets exercised that will have an impact on the overall cash flows which the bond is going to generate 
So to take care of those uh, possible impacts of changes in cash flows, uh, we have an effective duration as a metric uh, which we use in our analysis. So the formula for effective duration is given here. So one quick way to relate with the effective duration concept formula which you have written here. Let's say I'm standing on point X and I would like to calculate the effective duration. So what I do is I drop the yields by a very small quantum delta Y. I price the bond and if I drop the yields, I come to this point which I'm showing by the cross. And using this yield, I try to price the bond, which, which we represent by P minus, which we are also represented by point A. Next, I come back to the original yield of Y0. I increase the yield by Y star. And then I go to the higher yield, Y plus. Again, we'll reprice the bond. We get to P plus. And that way, this is shown by point B here. Now, we take a very, very small change in yield. We'll talk a bit about this quantum in a bit. But the assumed change in yield in delta Y will be very, very small. And accordingly, we receive the bond price for a fall in yield as well as the bond price for a rise in yield. And these are the numbers which go into the numerator of the effective duration calculation. And it will be divided by 2 into the initial bond price into delta Y, which is the change in yields. So this is how effective duration can be quickly calculated by a simple analysis.